Welcome to Behind the Play, a video and podcast product of The Hoop Show that explores the lives of Geelong players past and present, as well as the off-field figures that, ke- that are keeping us Geelong strong. My name is Paul James, and today I have the great pleasure to be talking to AFLW star, we're going to go that far really early on, Brooke Plummer, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm really, really well, and really stoked to have you aboard the show. Um, I believe, I mean, we've, we've gone through one season of the show already, through uh, kind of the men's season 2022, and uh, you are the first active player current day active player that we've we've um got on the show and it's it's i mean i'm thrilled to have you aboard it's gonna be really cool well that's awesome <laughs> so so thank you for kicking that off and yeah really really excited to get to have a chat but um we're, we're going to talk about the, the the growing aflw career shortly and and you know some of the excitement around that first season but before we get to all of that i'd love to kind of just learn a little bit about when you first kind of came across the game when did you when did you first start playing footy how did you get introduced to the game where did it all begin for you where, where did all the love start yep so um i actually started when i was about five in auskick um, yep. my brother played so kind of followed him along went down to the local footy ground and um had to kick around with the boys um so i played boys for about 14 years so I went yep. straight. So I went from Oz Kick to under nines at Yarrambat, right through to under fourteens. And I guess when you hit the fourteens, it's basically time you've got to switch, which was kind of a hard transition for me, um, just because the girls were starting and didn't really you know. You had the experience. Yeah, um, and didn't really know the pathway through there. Whereas I knew yep. if I stuck with the boys, the skills and everything would be at high standard. And I've always. Um, learnt off the boys so I was going in kind of to go completely blindside in terms of the skill level and um but in saying that that helped obviously my leadership and my confidence around speaking and everything so yeah, yeah that's that's a really cool way of looking at it because yeah certainly the the first splash impression I'd imagine well for myself and I'd imagine most people watching and listening would be oh okay so you're just going to dominate every week and, <laughs> and and I'm sure I'm sure you probably did but um <laughs> But at the same time, yeah, that's that's a really cool way to look at it in terms of what what it does for leadership and those sort of things because you are yeah. essentially helping mould a whole bunch of other young players and help guide them along and teach them what you yeah, know. So it's sure. that's a really cool experience, I guess. Yeah, yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, so we did that, and obviously changing to the girls, I was getting to that age where the rep stuff started. Yeah. So the NFL, which was my local league rep, um, was starting up. So that was pretty cool getting there and. Um, I guess that's really where it kick started and the recruiters yep. kind of had their eye on and then you obviously move up to the future squads and NAB League and Big Metro and all that. So um, I guess when you get your foot in the door, uh, it's just that bit of a confident boost and and it also helps you adjust um, to the level um, yep. and help those that need help and when you have that experience with the boys and the high level and the physical contact and everything like that, it just brings a whole nother aspect to the girls, um, to the girls game in yeah. terms of the voice and the way that you read the ball and can bring your teammates into the game for sure. Yeah. Really cool. What about um, before the, even the experience is kind of playing? When, when did you first discover the game itself? And I mean, who were you supporting when you were growing up? Cats fan? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I was. Yeah. Um, so, when I, I really discovered footy when I was um, really, really young. Yeah. Um, always had a footy in my hand. Good, good, good. Ever since, ever since I was born, yeah. And I got my, um, always had my little Geelong jumper on and everything like that. I used to wear that everywhere. <laughs> used to hate when mum take it off me, but yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm I trying first, to think. Oh, sorry, go on. So I just kind of first discovered about... Um, when I was about, I reckon, around three, yeah. Just in love instantly. And it was always yeah. Geelong? You didn't, uh, you weren't a typical kid, you know, kind nah. of bounced around and choose a team as you'd pick Geelong nah. and that was it? Yep, always Geelong. Yep, and I even have my little Geelong jumper hanging up. Was it um, the Geelong through the family? Like, how, how did you kind of discover Geelong as, as that team for you? Was was everyone, yeah. was it a cat's household? Nah, so... Um, Dad's Brisbane, Mum and jo- my brother Josh are Richmond. Uh, but my next door neighbour was Geelong. Um, my mum's sister was is Geelong, and my mum's dad's Ge- was a mad Geelong supporter. So yeah. it's kind of run through <laughs> run through a bit of the family. But 
yeah, I got kind of pushed in the Geelong direction and um, obviously it's paid off. <laughs> yes, it's worked out pretty well. I mean, how, how's that excitement when, and we are kind of skipping a few little steps along the way, but how's that excitement when you actually then get drafted to the team that you've supported your entire life? Yeah, oh, it was surreal. Like, I guess you always want to be drafted to the team that, that you barrack for as a young kid and you put the jumper on. Um, every Sunday as you go to Auskick and you just kind of see... Dream of doing that on the yeah, big stage. And you see, yeah, that's it. And you see your little um, five-year-old self on the big stage. And for me, t- um, to make it become a reality is like was just surreal and a lot of emotion. <laughs> that's really um, cool. So, yeah, to put on the put on the hoops was awesome. I mean, it's it's not common amongst the, both the men's and the women's game for... For pe- I mean, it's just it's just a probability thing, but they, it's yeah. it's not likely that people are going to get drafted to the team that they've supported when they're growing up. So you're in a very, I guess, exclusive club in a, in a number of ways, and yeah. um, I'm sure it probably even provides that little bit of extra fuel to the fire on a on a daily yeah. basis as well, on on game day as well. Yeah, for sure. Well, the first day, um, put on the hoops jumper, I was like, this is crazy. <laughs> like, um. I just had to take it all in and for a second I just remembered myself as a young kid wanting like to put on the jumper and um, to stand at the race and I kind of had a little look down to my jumper and I just felt so proud to wear it um, and to run out with these amazing girls who've helped me in such a short amount of time and um, helped me bring out that confidence in myself so um, yeah it was really really good and never forget it. No that's that's awesome and um it must have also been interesting in the sense that obviously the from everything I hear and see, the club does a really great job of kind of connecting both the the AFLW and the AFL men's teams yep. as well. And so I'd imagine there's there's a there's a bunch of players that are on that list or have been on that list in the in the period that you've been at the club that you would have been looking up to as a kid when they were playing. Yeah. I, I instantly think of the likes of of Joel, of Hawk, um, yeah. Mitch Duncan, etc. That were all kind of part of that period that when, when you were first discovering the club and first you know developing a love of footy and you arrive at the club in 2022 and yep. there they are. <laughs> yeah. <it laughs> what was, was that like? Um, it was surreal. I got a text from Joel actually and I was like, hmm, that's a bit strange. Like, you're literally like one of my mentors and next minute I'm getting a text. Just so that was like, phone. I know. It <laughs> um, was really surreal. And I got one from Paddy as well, which is amazing. Like, he's he's such a good player and such a good role model to the young ones, um, the young draftees. And you see that on the field as well as Joel. Um, obviously, He's hung up the boots, but like his leadership will carry on forever and just the way that he's led Absolutely. that group um, for sure. And like I looked up to Jimmy Bartel, he was my big supporter. So You, you and me both. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, no, so, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy um, was my boy when he when I was coming through as well. So Yeah, yeah. So number three um, was my was my biggest fan. So good old Jimmy, but that's all right. Um, but... Even like in the girls, like um, Meg, Dad, yes. um, G Rankin, Becky, um, everyone like that, Croc, um, they all have like amazing leadership skills and have wrapped me under their arms. Um, and it's good, it's kind of weird because I'm like the youngest in the group, and you know, you've got girls that are um, like in their 20s, and yeah. yeah. And that's it. So um, obviously, it's been good just to be able to fit into that group so seamlessly, and um, could be myself always. So they've really helped me get out of my shell. Obviously, going to a new new environment and completely um, like new part of the world, basically for me. Oh, for sure, yeah, big move. <laughs> yeah. Um, so they've really helped me in terms of that and making sure that I'm comfortable if I need anything. So. Big shout out to everyone who's helped me along the way for sure down in Geelong. Yeah, that's that's awesome to hear. And I guess like we'll, we'll really wade into the AFLW side of things shortly and your teammates. And I mean, obviously you shouted out some incredible teammates and yeah, that, that leadership I think's really shone through in, in particular this year. It's yeah. um, there's There's been, I think, a lot of dots connected and I guess a lot of threads that we've kind of seen there loose over the last couple of seasons that really came together incredibly this year and and made for that finals charge but um before we, before we get to that obviously not only was there a love of playing the game but you did a bit of umpiring as well yep. um what what was that like because that's a yeah it's a totally different perspective of yeah course. yeah for sure um yeah you learn a different part of the game um to be honest you learn about 
you know, you, you know, you hear the criticism on the side. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, but you also learn um, that also comes in the leadership. You know, you see, I start to get into the girls a bit more um, towards the end, and about under tens, I used to umpire. So I just seen that like those little girls, and um, obviously being my being that age previously, and seeing the way the pathway is um grown and what they can achieve was awesome and you just help them out as much as you can you it's kind of like you're a role model to them so yep. um just helping them learn the game as well and even the older girls pushed up to under 16s umpiring and just seeing like their development and everything like that so aflw is definitely um gonna look bright which is a good thing and Fantastic. for me yeah, for me, um, umpiring was just earn a bit of money on the side, um, help out the community, give back yeah. a bit. Um, they've helped me a lot, so it's I found just it's just giving back to be honest. And I'd imagine even even for yourself in your own, your own game and those sorts of things, I think it is something that I mean most of us who are watching and listening and participating in the show haven't haven't umpired before. You you're obviously an exception to this to this rule yeah. currently, but um, I'd imagine that that opportunity still presents a really fascinating perspective that most of us won't ever have because something that might appear really, really obvious to you if you're the player in the mix at the time or if yeah. you're on the other side of the, the TV screen with a camera that's perfectly positioned that looks so obvious. That, okay, it was clearly holding the ball. It was clearly taken yeah. high or whatever. And you, you lose your mind over the umpire not calling it. Yeah. But imagine you would have gotten that perspective from actually participating in the umpire and realizing, well, yeah. I can't I can't have eyes in the back of my head. I don't have a 360 yeah. degree thing. I can't like I'm in this position if something happens and I'm blindsided because there's another player in the way or just simply the direction the players are facing I can't see it. Yeah. Well, what can I do? Yeah, um, and I'm sure that was really yeah. handy for you too. Yeah. Um definitely a new perspective obviously. Sometimes you you don't agree and you throw your hands up and stuff but um, I guess you learn a different perspective about the game and what the umpires see and everything like that. Yeah. Um, obviously, things are going to happen that you're not going to see, but, you know, what can you do? It's going to happen probably behind behind the play or something and you're going to get this. But nice plug too, can... thank you, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just as long as, you know, they see what they see or um, and you stick to your game, you don't let it get it. Um, the umpire's decision psych you out the game. It's all mental, to be honest. Um, 100%. Don't get in the umpire's heads because, you know, knowing me, I've paid a few free kicks against the opposition team. So um, for me, it was just learning about what the umpires see and um, and then taking that back into the AFL game and yeah. not trying to get mad <laughs> or anything because, you know... You've been there, are, you know what it's like. Yeah, that's it. So... Um, you know, sometimes it does come out, <laughs> but yeah. what can you do? Yeah, you just you try and reflect on it and yeah, try and learn it. something from it at the same time. Yeah. So as as we do approach your your time in the AFLW, there's the draft itself. You picked up a pick 42 in the 2022 NAB AFLW draft, and yeah. obviously Geelong, as we, as we've discussed, uh, and got to hear from the likes of Joel and Paddy, etc. As you yeah. um as you're moving through. But what was it like draft day? When all this is happening, you've been picked. Not, I mean, not only great, I've got a spot, but again, it's it's Geelong, and there's that extra layer of yep. excitement. What what was that like, and how quickly did you start packing your things and finding your way down the freeway? Yeah, well, I got the call um, straight after I got announced, basically by Dan, and I think Meg was in the room as well, and I'm not sure if Neens was in there. I think there was a couple of girls in there um, in the room when Dan called me, and it was just full of excitement, like emotion. I had a lot of people around me. Um, all like the Damo girls, both yep. junior and senior girls, um, which is my local, my senior local club, I guess you can call yep. it. Um, so having like all them and then my family and everything like that on the night was so good. And just to get my name called out by Geelong was even more special. So when Dan called me and said, get your bags and stuff you're coming down tomorrow i was this like this wasn't a dream <laughs> yeah i was like reality's kicking in very fast yeah i bet um, and then um went down to training um that not that are very sorry and train with the girls and you just see the different level of standard like everything just rises from one level to another and you just see the way that girls push each other and you know you've got to 
take it all in quite quickly, um, yep. especially with a quick season turnaround. Like I was, yeah, I this was a weird one. for two to three weeks, I think it was, and it was straight into round one. So I had to pick up things quite fast. So just having those sessions, obviously right straight after draft, did help in a way. Um, so yeah, but just getting down there and meeting all the girls the next day was was like a dream come to and it was a really really good good experience was it a bit of a weird sort of whirlwind though because of that incredibly short turnaround between seasons the draft yeah. kind of wedged somewhere in the middle there to a, you know and then obviously leading in yeah as you said two or three weeks before the season's going yeah um what yeah. was that like for you as you, you're jumping in and i guess it's not it's not like most drafts where you've got an entire pre-season yeah. and week, weeks to kind of get yourself acclimatized and settled round yeah. one is so close it's less than a month away yeah. Yeah, um, I thought it was all right. Like I'm pretty good at adapting quite quickly. Oh, good. It was more. It was more just learning the structures and everything. Um, you know, it, that takes a bit bit of time. So um, not having a full preseason and everything like that, and you've got the girls from season six um, who's been there and already done that yep. um, at the start of the year. So you kind of had to come in. Um, and basically jump straight in the deep end, like learn everything as much as you could. But the coaches were so good with that. Um, and obviously game time helps. So even like making my debut um, and everything and being able to put as much as I learned in that short amount of time on game day was yeah. um, was really good. And, you know, you learn something um, new every session. like, And that's what that's I... That's what you want, right? That That's it. Like I really enjoyed that and... The learning experience so i can't wait to have a full pre-season um next year and hopefully play a bit of vfl get a bit more experience obviously with the big bodies and just learning about more the structure wise and how you learn yeah. play and everything like that um so yeah so it was like good to get some games in as well but really looking forward to next year and full pre-season um learn more structure wise get really fit and everything like that to have a really good season yeah that's that's great um you obviously mentioned the the debut round five against st kilda and it was a, yep. a pretty handy win i suppose uh, yeah. first up uh, <laughs> how, how does it how's it feel for you when you when you, you you make your debut you've worked really hard for it um over yeah. many years not just the time at the club it's, uh, yep. itself you get that opportunity, and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a smashing. Is it like how's the yeah. how's the celebration afterwards with the friends, the family? How, yeah. How's it feeling for you when when you go through this experience? So I don't think anyone ever takes it for granted. I don't think oh we'll do this every single week, but it must be a yeah. really really good feeling to get that first up. Yeah, for sure. Like not many times you debut and you get a really big win um, yeah. over a team. So uh, it was really really good and a lot of emotion. Um, but even before the game. Um, Meg presenting like, your jumper? Yeah. Yep. Um, that meant a lot. And even Dan, like, obviously he's come down from the northern suburbs where I'm from and um, he's played for the Knights and um, everything like that, played for Dymo. So having him also say a few words meant a lot because we have kind of been on a similar journey. Um, yes. Both played at clubs, like the same clubs. Um, and then obviously Meg, she's from Darabin and Dymo and Darabin don't mix very well but no I, I know a little bit about that yeah um but having her and um even her experience in the game and having such a really good role model in the group for us girls to look up to and for her to present my jumper was was um really honorable for me so um and I'll never forget it for sure and pretty happy to set that rivalry aside for that moment <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We um we still chat about it. But sometimes I've actually walked in my Dymo jumper in the Just... club, and you know she she comes up and gives me a bit of a nudge. But um, it's really good though. Good. That sort of th- yeah, that, that sort of yeah, stuff's good. It, it keeps it, it keeps the vibe and um that. But other than that, yeah, it was good. And the win, obviously, um going back to that was amazing. Like singing the song in front of the Geelong crowd was absolutely amazing and something i'll never forget and then signing my first footy and giving it to someone yeah um <laughs> was quite surreal and it's so weird like people people like having those supporters like you you get that at local footy but having like a You're whole an idol. stand and everything like that um, yeah people are dreaming of being in your position that's it that's it like you see those little girls at the front and you you know you, you've been there you've 
you've wanted the footies and everything like that and you just work work your way up and you're actually physically handing someone another little girl footy to hopefully follow your footsteps and get to the top. Yeah, it's it's really really cool and um something I'm sure every single player relishes every uh, you know and I'm sure well you've you fortunately fortunately enough kind of dodged that COVID mess where people really couldn't yeah. do much of that but um yeah I'm sure that's gonna be a satisfying feeling with every game that passes and you you've played four so far and uh let's let's make a note here for everyone watching and listening there's not been a single loss under your time on the field so without wanting to i know it's the, the wounds are still a little bit raw around the finals but yeah. i'm just saying maybe there was a mistake with you not being on the field that day because just guaranteed yeah. win right yeah well you don't have to you don't have to agree to that just quickly <laughs> it's um you know you've got in finals it's a whole different game yeah. like everything like that and to play to be a draftee and play in the finals would be absolutely amazing but um you know, I think we had the best team out there and um, would have absolutely loved to be out there for sure. And um, More fuel for next year, right? That's it. Like, it just makes me want it even more. It was definitely a bit of a resilience tester. Um, being so close, like being number one emergency and so close to um, being able to run out um, with a team and in a first final, which is not a lot of things like yeah. drafts can do. So... Being able to do that would have been amazing, but, you know, we tried and it just makes us more hungry for next year for sure. Now, an important part of your story, I think, for, for a lot of the a lot of people watching and listening um, is the fact that when you when you debuted and through entire pl- almost the entirety of your playing season, yep. you were 17. So yep. you still had school along yep. the way. What was what was that like? Because I mean, we used to hear these stories on the men, in the men's side of the game that would happen often. I think actually, Paddy Dagefield is a great example of kind of that, and his his story has always been spoken about a bit because he uh, stayed in Victoria despite being drafted to Adelaide yeah. and would play locally, but then eventually made his debut later in the season. He kind of flew over for that. Yeah. It was a it was a whole sort of thing there, but we don't hear as much of that anymore. So your story, I mean, I don't know how how unique is that on the the AFLW side. Is that still happening a little bit more often, or is is it yeah. still even quite uncommon for you? Um, so with school, um, it was obviously quite challenging at points. Um, having a full day at school, then going traveling to Geelong and coming back home and getting home quite late. Yeah. Um, but it was more just like you kind of had to suck it up a bit, to be honest. Like, um, I'm do- I was doing VCAL, so I was only at school yeah. three days a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, which helps a lot. Um, whereas like kids doing BC, that's exams and everything. So, um, like I was able to kind of work around a bit more because um, yeah, I didn't you. have to really prep for exams or anything like that. So um, it was it was more just like the long days they catch up to you a bit, yeah. um, and being able to juggle your workload and Geelong were really good with that. Um, and any time that if I needed or had an event and I couldn't get to training, um, they would put stuff aside for me that I could do at home. Yeah. Um, and obviously sometimes with the travel, you know, you just can't fit everything in at once. Well, it's a big um, trip too. If the weather's a little it. bit shit on the day, then all of a sudden yeah. that kind of slows down and suddenly maybe takes the, the opportunity to get to training off the table, yeah. whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's it. Um, I'm never one really to miss training. I always like to get down. Um, so, yeah, I just had to make it work and thought I did pretty good with it, considering the travel and everything um, and figuring out the schedule. So, with school, it wasn't that big of much of a difference to myself. Yeah. Um, but I know a few other girls who are doing BCE, BCE and... Um, Found it a bit tougher. Yeah, yeah, with, like, exams and stuff. So, credit to them and credit to all the girls that made it work. Yeah, um, I mean, we were talking beforehand, and I won't be outing anyone here, but like, it is kind of a little bit of context there. Like, it's just kind of bubbling away in my head because I've got I've got someone who is currently fancied as being a, a candidate for the for the next the next AFLW draft, and um, yeah. knowing that you know what she's potentially about to be facing with with yeah. the year ahead, and then eventually, hopefully, a draft that is successful for her, let alone all the work that she's going to do up to that yeah. point. Like, it's a um, it's interesting to hear that kind of perspective from you, and even just you know, kind of taking it as as a teacher and going okay like you know were the teachers really 
really good in accommodating you and allow like kind of being able to be a bit fluid with some of their, yep. their times and schedules. I know they, I know there's kind of constraints from the bigger bodies than just the school yeah. itself, but um, were they mostly pretty good about trying to maneuver and make things work for you, considering yeah. some of those hours? Yeah, my teachers were really really good. Um, I just had to communicate everything well with them um, and make sure that everyone was similar on a like Same on a wavelength. similar page. Yeah. Um, like obviously you get to school and you know you might I would have to leave a tiny bit early just to miss the peak hour traffic. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that's it. You do what so, you're gonna do, right? Yeah, that's it. Um, <laughs> so just to get down to training. Um, yeah. Just so, like, the teachers were really, really good. And um, even when I got drafted, they were like, anything you want or need, just come straight to us. So just having amazing teachers, uh, amazing school and everything like that to help me and um, help accommodate the needs that I that I wanted was, yeah, it was really good. That's that's awesome to hear. And, um, yeah, I'm certainly kind of taking a few little notes for myself going into, <laughs> into 2023. Hopefully hopefully I can at least do my bit to help support in that, in that sense. But um, yeah. as we kind of, you know, progress to the point where you, you've, you've joined the club, you've obviously mentioned, you know, the heaps of fantastic faces you've got to meet straight away. Is there anyone that you really clicked with right away beyond probably some of the other girls that you got drafted with? Because I think that's a pretty natural sort of thing. Yeah. In terms in terms of those that are were already entrenched at the club was, and we've obviously spoken about Meg and the little rivalry there and those <laughs> sorts of things. But was there anyone who really in particular maybe took you under your wing perhaps because of a positional sort of thing and you were going to be playing similar roles? Or yeah. um, was there you know, was there anyone in particular that really stood out? And I hate for you to kind of leave a bunch of names on the table here, yeah. but you know, was there anyone who sticks out, I guess, or took yeah. to you? Yeah. Um, so just for everyone, everyone help me. Everyone's <laughs> great. No, no, there's no doubting that. Um, but G Rankin and Kate Darby really took me under their wing. Um, like obviously where they play different roles to me, but just in the way that they help me feel really comfortable in the club. Um, you know, we have a bit of a laugh and everything like that, which obviously helps. Um, like that and then for like positional point of view Zali Friswell who got drafted last year has really helped me talk took yep. me under her wing in terms of bit positioning as well as Bowie um, yep. she got obviously traded from West Coast and has a lot of knowledge in the game so she also really helped me on game day and anything that I needed I knew I could always go to her that always um, helps yeah so that really helped me but for, for sure G Rankin and Kate Darby really helped me Obviously, as a young one, um, 17, like, you, I've always looked up to the older girls um, and used them as a bit of a mentor. So um, just to have them as a role model for me meant a lot um, and someone that I can always confine in when I need it. So, yeah, forever grateful for them, guys. No, that's that's awesome to hear. And uh, another thing that I I want to pick your brain about a little bit is uh, I was combing through your stats from your, from your game so far yeah. and I couldn't help but notice the... Uh, the wide difference, and I'm a bit of a stats person. I'm a maths teacher, I guess. That's probably yeah. not surprising, I guess, in that sense. But um, uh, I couldn't help but notice the large disparity between the kick to handball ratio. So far, amongst your four games, I don't yeah. know if you've, if you've realised there's uh, just one handball so far. I yeah. assume you've got a preference then. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I can't, I can't say, like, I've, you know, I've watched the games, but I can't say that I'd notice on that sort of granular level. Like, oh, hang on, yeah. we're a few games in now, we've only had one handball. Like, I, yeah. think, tw- I think if I'm right, it's about... 30 kicks something like that to one handball so far yeah so. well i know um as a young kid uh, playing with the girls especially mum like drilled it in my head do not handball either use your legs or kick it <laughs> Fair. so i've kind of gone with that um and i guess but now if i've now started to learn if the handball is there use it but i think i've grown up um a bit of an ego booster but <laughs> yeah. growing up with a good kick um, always try and get it on my boot as much as um, much as possible. Get it forward, um, which hopefully gets it in date for us to result in a goal. Um, now, obviously, we have strong forwards. Um, yes. And oh, yeah, some, some great, some great forwards yeah, delivering to you. Yeah. yeah. So being able to get it into them, um, I think sometimes a kick is a bit more effective than a handball just to get it forward. Oh, absolutely, um, no doubting that. So in that kind of term, yeah, just get forward and um, I guess that's some one of my strengths yep. is my kicking, being able to hit targets and everything like that. So, um, yeah, 
and it's good because I can use both sides of my body, so use left and right. Yeah. Um, well, that's that's a huge advantage. Yeah. So, um, in terms of that, yeah, just get on the boot for sure. Um, and of course, I mean, you know, we hear it all the time through kind of all clubs and all levels of the clubs. We, you know, we always hear about kind of role players and those sorts of things. Yep. And if it, you know, I think it's it's one of those important things that if if your strength is your ability to run and and kick and you know hit the target with you know from range like that, then you lean into your strengths, right? So yeah, if that's, that's a strength it. of yours, then I think it's something that not only you can kind of build your game around, but the the club can go, okay, well this is a this is a key pillar that we can, can yep. you can lean on here. So how, like, how can we get the ball? Um, to Brook in order to, you know, hopefully get that that great inside yeah, fifty. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, me and Dan have actually obviously spoken about this. So he said, um, and our one of our key things, especially towards the end, was get it forward. Yeah. Just get it forward. Um, say compose. Try and hit targets. The more we get it forward, um, especially deep entries. Um, the, the more, more it results yeah. on the yeah that's it more results on the scoreboard and obviously that was one of our big goals we were so good with the ball in hand but it was just that execution when it comes to goals so that yes. was just one of our big things obviously heading into um, finals was just getting it in so being able to um, use my attributes to the team and give them one of my strengths was awesome and um, hopefully I can improve obviously there's always improvement so yep. um just getting my kit 100 percent um and everything like that to help the team yeah very good um reflecting on that 2022 season outside of a, the debut which i think is obviously fairly obvious there do you have any particular highlights from the from the game so far anything that i guess really stands out the most yeah um i have a few but so i know a couple of people playing in the bulldogs and yep. um kirstie lamb oh yeah um, yeah yep yeah, so she was she played at my local club and has helped me quite a bit in terms. Oh, so you got of, that history. Yeah, so playing against her and um, like we actually went one on one in a contest, <laughs> and it was just surreal. Like playing against her and Gabby Newton, she was my NAB league coach, one of the coaches there. So um, just running out alongside her was cool, and mm. just being able to see all my other mates that I've played with, like Riley Wilcox, Killy Queen, Sophie Hurley, Monham, like everyone like that. Um, even just seeing them play, I didn't play against Sydney, but... Um, You'll get your just, chance. Yeah, that's it. So just seeing like them as well progress in the AFL W level has been amazing. So obviously seeing everyone that I've played alongside or, yeah, played alongside um, has been awesome just to play against them and see how much they've learned and you know you always learn off them yeah as much as a teammate so yeah no that's that's awesome to hear and yeah hopefully there's more experiences like that hopefully uh some more of the diamond creek girls come through and you might get an opportunity yep. to play against some people or with even you know potentially yep. some some people that are in you know that maybe a year or two below you that you've kind of interacted with a bit along the way i'm sure that would be a a really cool future highlight as well but oh, i guess on that reflection sort of theme how do how do you and the club reflect on the season now now that it's over and um yeah, well, I guess with the result, the way things played out in the final there, and it, yeah, again, even your own season, where yep. to from here? Yeah, so my reflection um, was obviously quite long. Um, obviously, I had quite a lot to reflect on. So in terms of long, had a very long journey of football. Like I didn't really stop. Yeah. From January this year, from NAB League. Yeah, true. Yeah. right through um, almost 12 months yeah that's it that's it so i had a lot to reflect on um uh, and then obviously aflw that's a whole nother level so just how fast i had to adapt um learn everything and kind of watch the footage back you can see i can see where i need to improve on and something that i can work on during vfl or in pre-season um and even aflw season when it comes up yeah. so Reflecting on that, um, the way that I dealt in the team, uh, obviously keeping those connections and um, if I need anything like that, being able to reach out They're good. whenever I need. So um, just to get that that extra experience and learn what I need to do. Yeah, that's it, um, to get better. No, that's, that's, that's awesome to hear. And I guess um, 
there's plenty you can take away from those four games and from that uh, seeing what happened in the finals and uh, not not just for yourself but again as as a club as well um because yeah. i think i think you you nailed it on the head when you were talking about your own game in terms of the just get it in there and i think yeah the club did a really good job of that on the day and obviously there was just that little bit of polish at the end so there's yeah that was kind of lacking and ultimately kind of played yeah. a bit of a part in the results so i'm sure there's there's a lot of reflection for, for everyone involved and that yeah. you know, inc- including yourself and okay so we've we're ticking off that that kind of core goal like it is there the forwards are you know are there and the ball is being pumped into them so how can we how can we tweak that a little bit to either make sure that we're hitting a leading target or open target how do we how do we position ourselves as forwards to make sure that we're giving yep. the, those delivering the perfect opportunities so there's i'm sure there's all of that as well yeah yeah so um we had our exit meetings and everything um and there was a lot of reflection especially like with the coaches and obviously individuals and lions and everything like that so Mm. we've definitely reflected on it to see to see how we can go better next year and there's definitely we're definitely improving we've stuck together really really well and i'm so keen just to see what we can produce next year because it's only um better better for us in the future for sure so you've obviously just spoken about how it's, it's been really close to like 12 months straight of footy yep you're obviously enjoying a bit of a break now um when do you actually get up and running again yourself like i'm sure you're doing a bit to keep yourself you know yep. where you need to be and and maybe build the base for for the pre-season and, and everything yep. that's to come but but when do you formally get started again yeah so um i'm actually not quite sure just yet that's right so you've got plenty um, of time then right yeah 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 so I think so. I'm playing. Um, I think it's after Christmas that I'll get back into it, yeah. playing with VFL and everything like that, um, which will be a good opportunity. And then obviously play my best footy there and hopefully produce my best footy in the it's AFL season. Yeah. That's it. Um, obviously doing gym now, um, just trying to build build up the strength playing against those bigger bodies. I've definitely learned that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not that big. So got to. They can hit hard, right? <laughs> that's it. So got to get the protein and everything in here. <laughs> um, and yeah, so just using the gym as much as I can, just to strengthen, strengthen my body and help the muscles and everything. But also doing the recovery that I'm that I need. Um, yeah, it's been it's a been a long season. slog. So yeah, yeah, getting the mental break. Um, must admit, it's good to have some sleep ins and everything like that. Oh, I and, bet. Your off days, um, you know, you might just go for a walk or something just to chill out. So having those off days as well and has been really helpful. Being able to get up to my nan's a bit more, see her and see mum's side of the family as well. Right. Yeah. So just seeing the family a bit more as well, without the travel. And I believe you're also into the motorbike as well. So does it give you some opportunities yep. to to have a bit of fun on two wheels there as well? Yeah. I haven't actually ridden in a while, to be honest. Okay, get it, uh, gathering a bit of dust right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but hopefully be able to get back out in the bush soon and rip up a couple of tracks. Good. I love my bike. It's uh, it's one of my freedoms mm. away from footy and um, something that lets me have a peace of mind, go flying down the track and <laughs> get the wind in your face. So it's, it's really the- good. Is there a little bit of extra? I mean, you obviously ha- haven't gone back out yet, but is there that little voice in the back of the mind now that's you know uh, just maybe yeah. that half a click slower just to make sure that I don't yeah oh, break an sure. arm or something? Yeah. Yeah. Well, mum always says don't go too hard and take it easy. That's her word. Take and this it time easy. you might actually take her advice on. Yeah, we'll see. When we'll you see. get down the track, it's <laughs> a bit different. The adrenaline uh, kicks in, right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> the adrenaline goes and um, everything like that. But yeah, and then over summer, I normally do a bit of water skiing. So being able to get back on the water yep. is another good thing for myself and get behind the boat um, and get oh, away awesome. with family and friends. Yeah, so hopefully get back on the bike soon and soon. back out on the water. Good to hear. Um, as we as we start to wind things up a little bit, uh, I'd, I'd be remiss not to touch on the fact that even since the the last episode we've had, uh, the the men's team won the grand final. So did you get the opportunity yeah. to to attend? Um, I did ha- actually have a, I did get a ticket, but um, sorry, I got the opportunity to get a ticket, yeah. but I didn't attend because I was going to a chuka with family friends, and yeah, fair I used that time as a bit of a wind down for me. 
obviously heading into the final series. Um, yep. I was going to attend and all the girls, I think, did as well. But for me personally, you I was really looking time. forward to getting away um, and having a bit of me time. I did watch it and did cheer and everything like that. Yeah, good um, to hear. So, yeah, but for me, it was just a bit of downtime away from footy that I think I needed for myself um, and just be able to chill out with some family friends as well, which was which was good for myself. Well, being a lifelong Geelong supporter, have you, I mean, obviously we, we've just discussed the 2022 one, but have you had the opportunity to go to any of the premierships along the way? Because we've, we've had a few in your lifetime so far. Yeah, um, no, I haven't. Oh, well, um, then the first will be the one that you win next year, right? That's it, that's yeah. it, that's it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, but I have watched them. I have been... Oh, no doubt about that, yeah. On the TV, my, um, actually, I think it was uh, the one against Collingwood, I think I was at my oh, auntie's place. Oh, 2011, yeah. Yeah, I think I was at um, my auntie's place and she had all the... Ge- I actually still remember, she had all the Geelong things up and um, we were there cheering. So, um, we're massive Geelong supporters, so for that was awesome and even just like when you enter the ground you see all the premierships up on the sand um actually the other week when i was down there and we're doing more i literally just stared them and it was it was so crazy um the amount of premierships we've won but not only that just the way that the club celebrates it so hopefully um we can get one in the bag and yes build that tally up no i'm I'm all for it and i Totally believe I was I was loving the way that you and the team were playing this season. And yes, yeah. things didn't work out at the end, but I think um, there's a really it's a really good look to the game. In fact, I, yeah. I look there's a few times I watched them like that's that's the men's the men's game. They're like they're, yeah. they're playing that same sort of brand, and it looks it, it's such an attractive brand of football. It's entertaining yeah. to watch, um, and uh, I mean the the men's team have proven that it, it delivers success, so I'm sure that's going to translate really well to to you and the girls, and hopefully that uh, yeah brings a brings about a flag in season 2023. Yeah, that's it. Um, definitely got a lot of work to do, but for sure, hopefully we'll be holding up that cup at the end. Um, I believe. But, yeah, so do I. <laughs> <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> um, but yeah, who knows? Just take it one step at a time, and hope be hopefully hold up mm. hold up that cup at the end and and beyond obviously the aspiration of holding up the cup what, uh, what about for you personally going next year beyond the yeah the obvious team success um what are you hoping to achieve next year yeah um obviously bring my be get that game more, tally up and yeah um get the start type a bit high that i liked obviously it's a different game style but being in nab league and everything getting the starts a bit higher um especially coming off the wing um getting myself in peak condition obviously playing a whole year of football your body starts to fatigue and everything yeah. like that um so fresh start everything we're gonna work really hard um off season even now in the gym like just building my strength get the physicality up yeah um, awesome be able to pin those tackles that's obviously one of my weaknesses so being able to stick those tackles at Dan Say and you know you're close and it's like boom like you bring them down and you don't let them go so just building up the upper body and everything like that um and then obviously uh, building on my strength so um being a bit more leadership like bring up my leadership a bit more um improving even improving my kicking making sure that I'm hitting those targets 99 out of 100 times well, that's um, the thing. Even if it's a strength, there's always still room to improve it, though. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. So that's yep. an opportunity, too. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And um, all the girls says I should be dropping a top. So maybe next year. Oh, I'll please, a, please do it. I'll That'd drop be great. A top in there. We'll see how we go. <laughs> just, just have have a, have a crack from outside fifty and just. Oh, line, yeah, it'd I be know. beautiful to see. Please, please do it. Uh, <laughs> I, I think every. I think I can speak on behalf of everyone watching and listening to this one right now and say. They're hundred percent keen. Please, please yeah, just launch one. It'll we'll be great. See, we'll see how we go. If we can pull it off, otherwise I might be having a word with Dan on the bench. <laughs> see, see now that now that you've announced that one, you're going to get the same sort of the you know the same noise that follows Zach Tui every time he kind of gets the ball. That yeah. If he's even slightly within range, or sometimes even if he's just kicking it out, the yeah. the, the noise that starts instantly. Now you've you're going to yeah. get that little bit of rumble in the background for the tops. So yeah, well um, I'll be there le- uh, leading that going forward. Yeah, we um in an Essendon game, these little kids at the 
at the back were like, drop a top. And I was like, <laughs> in my head, in my head, oh, I was I like, do just it. do I it. Do like, it. just do it. And I was like, you do it and it stuffs up. Like, oh. But, um, You're not going to come off that bench for another 20 minutes. <laughs> I know, I know. That's legit what I was thinking. So I was like, let's just stick to the drop punt and hit the free. Um, but who knows? Maybe next year you might see a tall. <laughs> Good to hear. I'm sure the, there's a license that the club can give you at some point, I'm sure. <laughs> um, so as we wind things down, a few lighter ones. Um, obviously, especially with the perspective of having been a cat supporter your entire life as well, who is the greatest cat that you've seen? Oh, um, who's the greatest cat? And let's... Oh, it's probably... It's probably I don't want to force you to play favourites on the on the AFLW side specifically, especially since they're, they're your teammates. So I won't put you in that sort of position. I'll just I'll leave it wide open and you can choose to take it however you want. Oh, the greatest cat. Oh, I don't even know. There's I mean, like... is it Jimmy? We touched on Jimmy before. Is it yeah. you know, Junior? Is it one of, one of the, the older faces? Senior? Is it uh, you know, Polly Farmer? Then we've got, obviously, there's plenty of choices. Joel? Yeah, there's so many. Um, obviously have to go with a goat uh yep. gary ablett jr you know he's he's been amazing um just seeing even like in the grand final the way he pushed through that shoulder like yes. was unbelievable just um just to help out the team obviously it didn't result which was kind of sad but um that but i think i mean even uh, even and we're time stamping the episode a little bit here but like even as of when um we record this just this past weekend he did a groin in his return and still yeah, just played out it, of the goal square it. and I and know. tried to entertain the crowd, so good on him. Yep, I did see that. I did see that. Um, even James Pozzioli, he was good. Yes. Um, he was, yeah, one of them. Um, Andrew Mackey, he was another one. There was, yeah, there's heaps. There's obviously Jimmy Butter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Everyone's favourite. <laughs> um, yeah, and then you had Joel, and then obviously Toma, Big Hawk. He's been one of our biggest at assets in the forward line when he's kicking for, them through the 10 big years six. now he's just that's it when he's kicking them through the big six um and when he's on he's on so you know you've got those big names um even like when you walk in Geelong you see their faces and yeah they're all uh, over the walls that's it so even just seeing them I reckon they're probably like my people that I've obviously definitely looked up to for sure even no, Motlop that... Stevie Motlop was really yeah. good at the forward line it was always Crafty. exciting that's it. Always keep uh, us on our toes. <laughs> oh, 100%. Um, I think I know the answer to the next one, considering the line of uh, the, the line of the response there. But uh, schoolyard pick and you had Gary Jr. and Gary Sr. in front of you. Who do you pick? Oh. Oh. I'd have to go Jr. That's fair. Yeah. No, don't blame me, especially with that last response. Um, yeah. So I guess we've, we've kind of touched on 2023 a little bit. Um, yeah. But who going into next season... There's, there's obviously a heap of really amazing players um, in the squad. Yeah. For anyone who's maybe not necessarily caught up with everything that everyone has been doing, who's who's a player that fans watching and listening today should really keep a close eye out for who's going to do some really great things next year once they get the, the opportunity? Yeah. Um, obviously, this year, you see um, Gunj has had a really big season in the back yep. line. Um, Bowie, you know, becoming a trade she's been tearing it up on the wing and you know getting that starts up really high and just her run and carry has been a big asset for us becky webster in yes. the midfield working with amac and prez um her crafts around the inside and being able to get it in and out and just her run up and down um has been amazing and then obviously you have jackie parry scotty shelly um we're running deep. down there so yeah there's you know, we have so many talented players, um, but really looking forward to the most would probably be um, Gunj down the back line. She's done a lot of damage this year for us and helped us in so many ways. So just seeing her progress to the next level um, in next year will be awesome to see. No, look, uh, really, really looking forward to seeing more of uh, of everyone that you mentioned there. And obviously there's going to be a new crop of draftees that will come through yep. um, and they're going to be exciting to watch as well. So uh, so thanks for sharing a little bit there. Um, I guess as we wrap up, I really want to congratulate you on everything you've achieved so far. It's 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 early days in the AFLW career so far, but to have notched up a few games, to have, uh, you know, well, we know that that, that torp is coming. Um, <laughs> to like just, you know, 
you've identified your spot. Again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're we're all going to be cheering for it now. Um, now that we all know that that's on the radar, we've, we're a hundred percent going to be calling you. And it, it won't just be those little kids next time. It'll be a whole stand that's cheering for it. So yeah. Um. So congratulations on everything that you've achieved so far. Thank you. Fantastic story. And um, everyone who's watching, listening, please look out for that name, Brooke Plummer, if you're not already, because Brooke's going to be doing some really cool stuff going forward. If um, if people want to see, learn more about what you're up to specifically, obviously there's all the club channels, but uh, where should people go? Yeah, um, I've actually been posting up on my Instagram a bit. Um, it's right above your head in the video version. Yeah. So, yeah, if you're seeing what I want to do, check on my Instagram because normally I post my morning strolls or something and good good everything like that um uh, yeah that's that's where i basically post so make sure to do so again if you're watching that video version it's brook Plum- uh, Plummer right up above uh brook's head right now in the video so so make sure to check that one out and i uh, will have it in the description for everyone on the podcast side as well again brook thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing this this journey so far and uh, i wish you nothing but the best in the the next few seasons and and what is going to be i believe a fantastic career Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks to everyone who's watching. And Cats fans, thank you very much for listening. As always, make sure to subscribe to The Hoop Show on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe to Behind the Play on podcast feeds. And until next time, remain Geelong strong. I'll see you later. That's it. See you guys. Thank you.